Archaeological excavations at the Neolithic Park Nabinia court tomb in Ireland have unveiled a rather strange fascination with hares. Basically big rabbits. Why do experts think hares were so important to the Neolithic inhabitants of the Ruffin Hill? And what else can we learn from this megalithic burial site compared to the many others in the area known as the Burren? Full disclaimer, the photograph in the thumbnail is not the Park Nabinia court tomb because I can't find any open source pictures of it or any contact details for the few people that have uploaded photos of it so that I can get permission to use it. But let's not let that stop us because the area is absolutely littered with megalithic tombs. So I can still illustrate the story pretty well with photographs of these. First things first, what's a court tomb? A court tomb, also known as a court cairn, can take a variety of shapes, but normally consists of covered chambers surrounding an open oval or circular courtyard. There are hundreds of these in Ireland, but they can also be found in Scotland, Wales and England. The photographs here are of the Creevy Keel court tomb, which I've just put as an example of what they look like. Other types of megalithic grave in Ireland include wedge tombs, dolmens, also known as portal tombs, and passage graves. Wedge tombs are single burial chambers which get narrower towards one end. Examples include the Park Nabinia wedge tombs, all in the same area as the court tomb I'm discussing in this video. Dolmens consist of huge horizontal lintels balancing on two or more uprights. One example is the Pulnabron dolmen, also in the Burren. Sometimes there are several lintels arranged to form a roofed corridor, and these are known as gallery graves rather than straightforward dolmens. Passage graves normally have one or more burial chambers with a long, narrow, covered megalithic corridor. The whole thing is then usually covered in earth or stones, forming a tumulus. Newgrange is a very famous example of this type. My typology is a little simplistic because there are so many variations on each of these. However, it does give a general overview of the different megalithic tombs to be found in Ireland. The Park Nabinia court tomb is located on the Ruffin Hill in the area known as the Burren. The rather eye-catching landscape of the Burren is made up of limestone that formed 325 million years ago in a tropical sea. Covered with ice during the Pleistocene, the earliest evidence for human habitation of the area dates back to the Mesolithic, although the majority of finds do date to the early Neolithic around 4000 BCE. The area of Park Nabinia has around 100 megalithic tombs, mostly of the wedge type, as well as the remains of Neolithic settlements. I haven't visited any of these, but from what I understand, at least one wedge tomb is signposted and open to the public, but the court tomb is on private property and can only be seen from the road. The Park Nabinia court tomb is made up of two burial chambers of 1.5 by 1.5 meters, which would have been roofed when it was in use. It's also made up of a cairn and a forecourt. The opening face is east-southeast, and it was originally for primary inhumations before subsequent reuse. Experts have identified four main phases of Neolithic inhumations, followed by cremated deposits in the Chalcolithic and Bronze Age. Several excavations have taken place at the site. The most recent one uncovered human bones belonging to approximately 20 skeletons of all ages, as well as pottery, flint tools and bone objects. But it's the faunal assemblage discovered in this excavation that was seen as particularly enlightening. The paper Hare's Juvenile Domesticus Structured Deposition and Ritual in the Neolithic Court Tomb at Park Nabinia, Ireland, published the results of this excavation. The faunal assemblage of the tomb consisted of amphibians, birds, cattle, sheep, pigs, dogs and cats, as well as 1,259 hair bones and teeth. The hair bones would have belonged to around 38 individual animals and appear to have been deposited with the human bones during each of the consecutive phases of inhumation at the site. 
Experts do not think the hairs were brought to the tomb by predators after it fell out of use, since there's little evidence of gnawing on the bones. So they think that the hairs were deposited with the inhumations during funerary rituals. Some hair bones were also excavated from the forecourt and the cairn stones around the tomb, so it's possible the rituals extended beyond the burial chambers. Ritual deposits of hairs at other megalithic monuments in the region have also been documented in the past. Although the excavation report was not particularly detailed when the Pulna Brone dolmen was excavated in the 1980s, hair bones dating to both the Neolithic and Chalcolithic were found there. Aside from megalithic tombs, hair bones have also been found in the Glencurran cave, which is close to the Park Nabinia court tomb. These were Bronze Age and Neolithic and were found with cowrie shells, human remains and other animal bones. Experts suggest that the discovery of hair bones at the Park Nabinia court tomb, as well as the remains of other animals which were largely neonatal or juvenile, may suggest rituals related to fertility and regeneration. Seasonality couldn't be determined for the hares. However, it's likely that the other animals were born and killed in spring, which might suggest fertility rituals coinciding with that season. A similar faunal assemblage was found in Cotswold Seven Tombs in England. It's also been noted that lagomorph bones and figurines were excavated from Iberian tombs dating to both the Neolithic and Chalcolithic. A lagomorph, by the way, is a hare, rabbit, or a pika. And a pika is this. The paper goes on to say that modern folklore in many regions of the world features hares and rabbits, sometimes in a positive light and sometimes in a negative one. However, there are many instances of this folklore being centered on fertility and regeneration, such as with the Easter bunny. Although no cultural continuity necessarily exists between the Neolithic inhabitants of the Burren and modern populations, experts still think this folklore may be significant, since those who built and used the Park Nabinia court tomb over many generations probably held similar beliefs. What else has been learnt from excavations of Neolithic tombs in Ireland? Well, a recent study titled A Dynastic Elite in Monumental Neolithic Society analyzed the DNA of 42 Neolithic and two Mesolithic burials from megalithic tombs and caves in Ireland. These results were then compared with other data from Neolithic and Bronze Age burials in the region, as well as others in Britain and Europe. The researchers found that new groups arrived in Ireland around 3800 BCE and brought farming with them, largely replacing the Mesolithic inhabitants whose genetic signature slowly disappeared. However, DNA analysis of the Park Nabinia court tomb skeletons showed a Mesolithic genetic signature was still present in the Neolithic. So some later intermixing must still have taken place, meaning the indigenous population survived into the Neolithic in small numbers. Those buried in Park Nabinia were fourth degree relatives, whereas one of these individuals had a closer genetic relationship with an individual buried in the Pulna Brun Dolmen seven kilometers away. This indicates a rather large community used these sites for burials rather than just family groups. A man buried at Newgrange was found to be the offspring of first degree relatives, either siblings or a parent and a child. Experts think this indicates the tomb was used by an elite dynasty who intermarried to keep their power and wealth within the family. The study also did a stable isotope analysis and found that those buried in passage tombs had a meat-rich diet. So the researchers think this new data shows a hierarchical society spread over a wide geographic region that became increasingly complex in terms of its monuments and interrelations over time. It's hard to be sure of what beliefs and rituals the ancients had and practiced. As I always say, I do think later folklore and myths are probably rooted in prehistory. I guess what I didn't understand about the hares in this paper though is how they were buried with humans. If they were part of a seasonal annual fertility ritual, what about human burials the rest of the year? Where did they go? 
The idea of a more complex society existing in Neolithic Ireland than previously thought is interesting and makes a lot of sense. In Malta, we tend to see the Neolithic temple builders as pretty sophisticated in terms of their monuments and their art, and as being part of a community that wasn't too different from the urbanized civilizations that were to appear later in the Bronze Age Mediterranean. The temples were not funerary monuments or domestic dwellings, so we're looking at a society that had villages, monuments for ritual feasting and megalithic tombs. In Ireland, for the Neolithic inhabitants to build hundreds of megalithic structures, there must have been a certain level of societal sophistication there as well. It makes sense that there was coordination over vast geographic areas rather than just within the small family groups of farmers. What do you think about the hares and Neolithic society in Ireland? Let me know in the comments. Please hit like and subscribe to the channel if you don't already. The link to my Patreon is in the description below if you would like to support my work through it. Come find me on Instagram, Twitter and Facebook where I post regularly. And I have a website, megalithhunter.com, where you can find the GPS locations of the places I personally visit, as well as a list of the podcasts I've been featured on.